This video is made possible by our loyal Patreon supporters. Visit patreon.com slash psychytruth. I have tons of awesome videos already ready for you. You can join me on Amazon Prime Video. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. Follow us on social media for tips, tutorials, giveaways, and daily inspiration. Hi, welcome. It's Julia. I'm so glad that you're tuning in to the first video in my 30-day program, Yoga for Weight Loss. I've designed this program so that you can really celebrate your body. Sometimes we lack motivation to get fit or to work out or to indulge in the self-care practices that we absolutely need. And through this 30-day program, you will begin to develop the tools you need to not only go through 30 days feeling really fit, but begin to develop habits that you need to have the life that you want. So I hope that you'll join me for this video and all of the videos so that you can torch calories, feel more fit, reduce your stress, and have overall a better outlook on your body and your life. So let's get started. So let's start standing. Come up to stand. Bring your feet right underneath your hips with your toes pointing forward. Draw your pubic bone up towards your belly button. Then take your shoulders way up to your ears, draw them back, and release your shoulder blades down. Now shine your palms forward and feel your crown lift up to the ceiling. So right here, we are in a mountain pose stance. Oftentimes, mountain pose can be taken either with your feet hips width distance or you can bring your big toes to touch. But I like to start with feet hips width distance so you can really find a firm, solid foundation underneath you. Just this pose right here is a power pose. Having a wide open posture already starts the benefit of increasing happy hormones in the body. So you're just taking a powerful stance. From there, let's begin moving. Take your arms up wide, like you could hold cotton candy or a globe in between your arms, and then feel your pinky fingers reach out, let the chest lift up. You might notice that your ribs are starting to flare open. Knit your front ribs in so you have this strong core. Good, now take your right arm over to your left arm and take a little side bend. It doesn't have to be very deep, just begin to move. Breathe up into your left rib cage, and we're just working out some of the cobwebs that maybe have gotten built up. Good, let's take the other side. Arc up and over, lift your right ribs up. Continue to breathe, and we'll talk more a lot about breath throughout this video and the entire course, because it is so, so, so important that you can tap into deep breathing to help your stress level and to ensure that you have the energy you need for exercise. Take a little twist. Right arm behind you, left arm forward. It's okay if your hips swing a little bit, but you want the majority of your rotation to happen from the belly and the ribs. Challenge your balance by taking your gaze back to your back thumb. Improvement in balance is huge in yoga, and it also helps you with all of your fitness goals so you can tackle any exercise with confidence and grace. Come back to the center and twist to the other side. You might notice that you're already getting warm just standing up. It's because you're using your legs, your glutes, your belly, you're beginning to incorporate twist, operating both hemispheres of the body, which is essential for having a comprehensive workout. Come back to the middle, reach up, and we'll take a little back bend. Go cactus elbows and draw your chest through. So I'm in Texas right now, so this is cactus arms, but maybe you're somewhere else. It might be goalpost arms for you. That's fine. Good, inhale, reach up. We'll do that breath with movement, which essentially is what a vinyasa practice is. Breath linked to movement. Inhale, reach up. Grab onto your left forearm. Exhale, side bend. Good, inhale, reach up. Switch your grip. Exhale, side bend. Inhale, reach up. Notice soft knees, exhale twist. Soft knees so that your hips have a little bit of swing if they need it. Inhale through the center, reach up. Exhale twist. Good, inhale through the center, reach up. On your exhale, back bend, draw your elbows wide. Lift your heart through. Inhale, reach up. 
Exhale, hands to your heart. Let's take that one more time now that you're getting the rhythm of that flow. Reach up on a breath in. You can put a little bend and play in your knees if you'd like. Side bend with your exhale. Good, breathe in, reach up. Switch sides as you exhale. Inhale, reach up. Open arm twist. Inhale, reach up. Open arm twist. Breathe in, reach up. Back bend. Inhale, reach up. And hands to your heart. Great job. So we're gonna move on to our next pose, chair pose. As you come to chair, keep your feet hips width distance just like you did in mountain. This is a great place to start as you're starting to develop balance. Maybe someday you'll bring your feet together, but feet hips width distance apart offers great surface area so you feel strong in your foundation. Take your hands to your heart and sit back in an imaginary chair. One good balance check here is to see if you can pick up all 10 of your toes. If picking up all 10 of your toes makes you feel a little bit wobbly, put more weight back. Oftentimes what people do is they'll just drop their chest to sort of mimic going back. That's not chair. Sit down until you feel your legs and your glutes turn on. Hands to your heart to start. One of the reasons that yoga is so fantastic for weight loss is because we're using these muscles, our legs, our glutes, and other big muscles in the body. Those are our calorie tortures. Sometimes yoga gets a bad rap for weight loss because people think it's just stretching. <laughs> but if you're sitting in chair right now with me, you know that you're doing a lot of work. This is where we wanna incorporate measured breathing. Make sure that your breaths are full on the in, full on the out. That's how we maintain an equal calm mood even when we're doing challenging things like chair. Let's add the last element of chair pose. On your inhale, reach your arms up. Good, so now you're using both halves of your body, the lower half which is torching calories, the upper half that's keeping you bright. Take a breath in, and on your exhale, draw your hands to your heart, straighten your legs and stand up. Squeeze your glutes at the top. Good, inhale, sit back into chair. Exhale, stand up, hands to heart. Breathe in as you sit back and reach your arms up. Breathe out as you squeeze your leg muscles to the bone. Inhale, chair. Exhale, hands to heart. Breathe in, chair. Breathe out, hands to heart. Just two more, breathe in. Exhale, hands to heart. Last one, inhale, reach up. And exhale, hands to heart. So sometimes as we're working out, even during the workout, we don't feel super motivated. That's okay, I've been there too. But remember to trust the process, because after you're done working out, your body will actually be flooded with happy hormones, and it starts to create a reward process, so you look forward to it next time. So if you're kind of stuck in the, I don't feel motivated, grumpies, it's okay. Just keep going, I'm with you. So let's take that flow that we practice at the top of class to continue building muscle memory for it. On your inhale, reach up. On your exhale, side bend. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, side bend. Inhale, reach up. On your exhale, twist. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, twist. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, back bend, heart high. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to your heart. From here, reach up and then fold forward so your feet can go wide, drop your head. I'm dropping my hair, so I'll actually take a moment and put my hair up. I'm starting to get a little warm anyways. Okay. Do do do. You might notice even after just that little bit of movement, you're already starting to feel warm. I definitely am. Moving our big muscles of our body increases circulation. It starts to heat up the body. So here in this first forward fold, soften the knees a lot so you can release some of the tension. Drop your belly towards your thighs and release your head. 
Forward folds and really any yoga pose in which your head is lower than your heart is starting to stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system or your rest and digest nervous system. So if the top of class got you feeling a little bit over revved up, take this forward fold to release some of that tension and come back to neutral. If you hold a lot of tension in your jaw or in your shoulders, a lot of us do, make sure those spaces are soft. Two more breaths. Maybe your sit bones can come a little bit higher to the ceiling. If that feels like too much for the back of your knees, keep your knees very bent. Good. On your next inhale, place your hands on your shin bones. Lengthen your spine. Draw your shoulder blades away from your ears. And then step your left foot back. Spiral your back heel down so your foot is on an angle. Come up to standing. Reach your arms up to warrior one. In warrior one, you have a heel to heel alignment. That means if you drew a line from your front heel to your back heel, it would go straight back. However, some of us feel a little bit tight in our hips or maybe wobbly. So if you need to take a wider stance, heel toe your front foot all the way to the outer edge of your mat. Good. Here in your warrior one, Turn your rib cage and your armpits forward and reach your arms up overhead. So there's three different warrior poses in yoga. This is warrior one. We will get to know the other warriors very well in future videos, so make sure you stay tuned. But here in warrior one, the thing to remember is that you want a long spine and really bright arms. So we are finding blood flow and circulation all the way from toe tip to fingertip. Everything is active and engaged. If you feel that your low back is not very supported, pay attention to your midsection in Warrior One. Draw the belly in and up and continue to breathe. Really nice. Take one more. Inhale. On your exhale, step forward and come to the top of your mat. Good. We'll take just a little short flow back to our forward fold. On your inhale, reach up. Soften your knees. On your exhale, fold down. Drop your head all the way. Again, more bend in your knees is going to relieve some tension. Less bend in your knees is going to start to stretch out the back of your legs. Pay attention to how comfortable the back of your knees are. So if you feel too tight back here, Bend your knees more. Great, on your next breath in, place your hands on your shins, halfway lift your chest, lengthen your spine. Then lunge your right foot back, connect your back heel down. Again, heel to heel alignment. Rise up, reach up, warrior one. So now that you know the basic shape of warrior one, let's start to fine tune it a little bit. Anchor down into all four corners of your feet. So if you remember the picking up your toes trick we did in chair, pick up your toes again here. That helps you navigate balance through all of the major grounding points of your feet. From there, you can place each of your toes back down. So you feel firm down into your roots. From there, lift and lengthen your spine which, without shortening your lunge. So you want your lunge to stay nice and deep, but your spine very tall. From there, brighten out through your crown and your fingertips, and maybe even turn up the corners of your mouth. <laughs> Smiling scientifically improves our mood. So if you are looking for some of the benefits of an increased mood, happiness in your life, then turn up the corners of your mouth. We have lots of muscles in our face. We need to use those too. Good, take a couple more breaths. Warrior one should help you feel strong and confident. And the body posture alone is starting that process internally, in the internal environment of your body, you're starting to train yourself to feel more confident in any scenario. You're doing a great job. Take a breath in. On your exhale, hands to your heart and step back up to the top of your mat. Let's take another short flow. On your inhale, reach up. On your exhale, forward fold, drop your head. From here, we're going to a little bit of a deeper stretch. 
Halfway lift your chest by placing your hands on your shins. Then lunge your left foot back and place your back knee down. If you have sensitivity in your knees, then grab a blanket or a pillow and slide it underneath your knee. Then rise up to a lunge on your back knee and your front foot. From here, hug your inner thighs towards one another and zip up your belly. Then just like warrior one, reach your arms up. Good. So the balance is a little bit different here because you're on your back shin and your front foot. Notice your body's tendency to slump to one side or the other and hug to the middle. When we start to ignite that midline, we fire up our core. Once we have a lot of awareness in our core, we're developing our core strength, we start to radiate out. We can feel bright in our arms, we can feel bright in our face, and it's easier for us to find and focus on one point and stay locked in and engaged in our practice. From here, everything in your spine stays tall, but let's add the twist we learned earlier. Reach your right arm back, your left arm forward, and take your gaze to your back thumb. Right away, you'll notice this is going to challenge your balance, but that's a good thing. When you find an edge, that place where you shake and quake a little bit, your body is starting the process of changing and adapting to new movement. So instead of shying away from something that's a little bit difficult, I encourage you to lean in. Good, inhale, come back to center. On your exhale, plant your hands, tuck your back toes. Two options, either step back to downward facing dog where your tail is high and you're balanced on your hands and your feet, or if that feels too intense for your legs and your back today, come to tabletop. Anytime during this 30 day course, if you need to remove a downward facing dog, which we will do a lot of, you can always come to tabletop and that'll alleviate some of the pressure in your wrists and it'll also give your hamstrings a little bit of a break if you tend to carry a lot of tension back there. But you still can practice a really nice strong core and great posture in tabletop or downward facing dog. Good. So let's go to downward facing dog if that's something that you're going to take today. Press your chest back towards your thighs, root down through your hands. Feel your heels heavy towards the earth. That's just gonna bring some space into the back line of your legs. Good. On your next breath in, let's practice traveling to the top of your mat. Look to the top of your mat and then take either one step or a couple smaller steps until your feet are behind your wrists. Soften your knees and come back to the forward fold. Big breath in and an open mouth exhale. <sighs> Great. Hands on your shins, halfway lift. We'll do the lunge on the other side. Step your right foot back, place your knee down, rise up to your lunge, and find balance on your back shin and your front foot. From here, hug to the midline and reach your arms up. So once you start to get to know some of these poses, you might just start to crave them a little bit in your body. Like this pose helps me feel really good in my hip flexor. So I feel this nice big stretch for my quads, nice big stretch for my hip flexor, and it's really yummy. But if it's new to you, it might not feel yummy yet in your body. That's okay. The changes happen over time, but they happen pretty fast. So make sure you stick with it. One more breath in. Let's add that twist on breath out. Rotate left arm back, right arm forward and let your gaze track to your thumb. Continue to breathe. Sometimes I have to remind myself to breathe too, right? So just conscious breathing is different for our body. Our body's gonna breathe regardless, but when we add an intentional breath into our practice, it's help telling our nervous system, hey, you're okay, you're doing just fine. Good, inhale, return to center. And on your exhale, either downward facing dog or your tabletop, step back. It's a good time here to just put a little pedal into your legs. It'll help you release your hamstrings. So if you feel tight or maybe flexibility is difficult for you, yoga is obviously great for your range of motion. 
huge benefit of yoga, and you want to make sure that you're working on that just a little bit every single day. When it comes to increasing flexibility, you don't want to go too far too fast. You want to be very consistent so that your body has time to change and adapt. Good. On your next breath in, look forward, and then come through to a seat. So when you come down, bring your legs out in front of you. We'll take a nice, juicy stretch. So draw the soles of your feet together. Let your knees butterfly out. So this is called bound angle pose, but I like to call it butterfly pose because that's what it looks like. From here, lift up tall, and then just walk your hands forward. So if this is a newer stretch to you, I encourage you to start on your fingertips or on your palms before you lay all the way forward. So when you think about stretching, I really want you to consider the idea of range of motion. Huge benefit of yoga is that we feel more flexible. But what does that mean? That means if we have a nice range of motion, which is really what we're looking for, our mobility, when we feel mobile, then we have better control of our joints and we feel more in control of our body. And we all want to feel more in control of our body. We don't want to feel out of control. So working on our range of motion is one way that we can start to get to know our body a little bit better and we're gonna feel better because our joints won't hurt as much. So you don't have to go very far, you just go until you feel a little bit of discomfort that you can breathe through and that's really important. In yoga we pay so much attention to the breath because if you can't breathe through something, you're not gonna stick with it and you might be actually encouraging injury. So to stay safe, Make sure you can breathe through any pose. Great. Come on back up. And then we're just going to take our bodies all the way down to the yoga mat to lay down. So come on down. Stamp your feet about hips width distance. Draw your belly button down. Just take a moment. When you draw the belly button down, you're just starting to harness the core. We are going to talk so much about your core in this program because it is crucial, not just because you wanna look good in a bathing suit, although this will help, um, but really, why do we want core strength? So that we can fight low back pain, so that we can have better posture, more confidence. We'll have that mobility that I was telling you about. So core strength is not just about your six pack. It's so much more. And I hope you tune in to learn all about your amazing core in the future videos. But right now, just start with that little bit of belly button drawing down. Good. Now from there, lift your knees into your chest and then drop them over to the right and scoot your hips to the left. So if you do have low back pain, anytime we do a twist like this, just drop your knees a little closer to your chest or grab a pillow from your couch or your bed and slide that between your thighs. Good, and then open up the arms. So if supine twist is new to you, sometimes sending your arms out feels like it antagonizes the back a little bit. If that is happening, just take the left arm up by your ear. Two more breaths. Twists are fantastic reset for the spine if you're doing them appropriately. So I will make sure to let you know how to do all the different twists in yoga so that you feel really safe in your body throughout the entire course. Good, come back to the center. Scoot your hips to the center. Draw the belly button down just for a moment. Let the low back neutralize. So it doesn't mean you have to smash your back down to the floor, Not that's old school. Instead, you just wanna find a little bit of hug. Great. Now, bring your thighs into your chest. Scoot your hips over to the right and drop your knees to the left. And again, if you're experiencing any low back pain, I encourage you to draw your knees a little bit higher or put a pillow between your thighs just to keep it spacious. From there, arms can go out to a T or if that feels like it's too intense, take the right arm up by your ear. A 
another kind of old school thing we used to do in twists is that we used to really pull our hips to be perfectly aligned. But a lot of times what that ends up doing is just jazzing out some of the delicate joints in your hips, um, especially our SI joint where our sacrum meets our pelvis. So I don't want you to tug on your hips. Instead, focus on what you can control. And what you can control is moving the twist from your belly and taking deep, steady breath. Two more times. Great, one more. Wonderful. Come back to the center. Draw both of your legs into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze. And we will take Shavasana. Two options for Shavasana today. You can either extend your legs all the way out, arms all the way out. But if, like so many people, laying flat causes your low back to hurt a little bit, I have a great solution for you. Just stamp your feet, hips width distance, and let your knees touch in the middle. That just offers just a nice, spacious relief for your hips, your pelvis, and your low back. Ah, and it helps you enjoy the most essential posture of yoga, which is Shavasana. We're going to explore so many relaxation techniques over the 30 days. Because when it comes to making and keeping a habit, we have to fight the burnout. We have to equip ourselves with tools of self-care so that we don't self-sabotage. Shavasana is one of the best tools you can put into your toolkit to feel really great in your body and start the process of calming your mind. Take a few more breaths here. So often in our day, we are just rushing from one thing to the next. We very rarely take the time to pause, slow down, and let our brain and body catch up to one another. So Shavasana is a great place where your brain starts to process and create a memory for all of the work that you just did. So if any of these poses felt a little bit awkward or new in your body, that's okay, it's just day one. The amazing thing about your brain is that it really begins to memorize things and learn very fast. They say that the synapses that fire together wire together. So if you come back to the next video and the video after that, you're gonna start to create beautiful pathways between your brain and your body so that some of these motions just become second nature feel graceful and fluid and really excited to step onto your mat. Take another breath in. And this time, let your exhale be wide and open. Maybe that's the energy you want to take into the rest of your day. Open. Roll onto your side. From here, just press yourself up to a seat. In every video, we're going to take time to honor the work that we just did. So I want you to sit up tall, feel really proud of what you just did, and then take your hands to your heart in prayer. Just a gesture of gratitude. Gratitude for the body you've received to do all of the work you're meant to do, the mind that is intelligent and smart and ready to learn, and your heart that is open for the journey that's ahead. So thank you so much for tuning into video one of this 30-day program, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Namaste. And I'm here with some bonus features just for you. And today I wanna to talk about your time, specifically your schedule. One of the number one things I hear is, I don't have time to work out, I don't have time to eat healthy, I don't have time to meditate. 
I don't know, if everybody didn't have this much time, how do you shower in the morning? How do you even get up, right? Everything feels so busy. Well, the number one thing that I tell all of my personal training clients, people that come to see me at the studio, and even for myself, is to schedule it in your phone. So you just whip out your phone, pull up your calendar, and you need to make appointments with yourself. So if you're looking to do a yoga practice every single day, you're tuning into this 30-day challenge, then those should be appointments in your calendar. Think of it like making an appointment with your boss. You definitely wouldn't skip out on your boss. Well, you are the CEO of your life, and it is more important that you keep all of the appointments that you make for your own well-being, first and foremost, and everything else comes second. So I challenge you to hop on your phone, open up your calendar, and plug in the days this week that you're going to do your yoga practice. And then notice, what does it feel like when you keep that appointment with yourself? Can you start to build that reward pathway where you do something really, really good for yourself, you take the time to meet yourself, do your practice, accomplish a goal? I bet you'll find that all of the other things that you have in your life will also fall into place. It's really tricky when we start to get in the habit to allow everything else to sabotage the time that we've spent for ourselves or dedicated to ourselves. So when we make an appointment with ourselves and we really honor that appointment, that commitment that we've made, all of a sudden time opens up. We feel more abundant with our time and we also start to reduce the stress of when external things start to feel like they're kind of creeping in and taking away all of the time you've set aside for yourself. Look at it like an appointment, like a meeting, a meeting you absolutely can't miss. And I know you won't miss it because you'll feel really good after it's done. And I promise you, you will still have plenty of time to take care of all the other responsibilities and all of the other joys that you have in your life. So if you're up to the challenge, whip out your phone. And for the rest of this week, I want you to plug in specific appointments where you promise to be on your mat. I'm so glad that you've joined me for this challenge, and I can't wait to see you in future videos. I'm walking with you step for step throughout the entire thing, and I know you're going to notice incredible change over the next 30 days. I can't wait to power up practice with you. So if you feel like you wanna dive right in, I encourage you to do so. You can join me on Amazon Prime Video. Introducing Yoga Plus, offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health. Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus, download now for free.